In this video, we'll be showing the design and simulation of electric vehicles. The first part is the design of the electric vehicle. And um, so to begin with, what we do is we will have a look at the various parts of the electric vehicle. So you have the vehicle's body, you have the tires, you have the differential and the gearbox, and then you have the electric motors since it's an electric vehicle. You need a controller for this as well. And you have a battery and you have a driver. So we'll be looking at the integration of all these components into the system. And to design the system, so what we'll be doing is we'll be taking the example of the Tata Nano and the specifications of the Tata Nano are present in the table as shown. And with this, we can calculate the actual mass of the vehicle. So weight of the vehicle is equal to the vehicle's mass plus the battery's mass plus the payload, that's the person sitting in the vehicle or the people sitting in the vehicle and the weight of the motor minus the weight of the engine. So since it's an electric vehicle, you don't actually need the engine weight. And once this is done, we then go ahead and look at um, the total weight. So you get it as um, 1.015 tons. And then you also look at the other parameters, such as the gradient, air density, and so on. And then with this, you calculate the total forces in the vehicle. And the total forces is nothing but the sum of um, three forces and um, those three forces are the frictional force the drag force and the normal force the frictional force is the product of the frictional coefficient into the mass of the vehicle into 9.81 into cos alpha where alpha is the gradient and you take these values from the tables that we provided earlier and then your frictional force is equal to zero yeah and you get the value of frictional force similarly drag force is half into the air density into cd into the frontal area into vehicle speed maximum vehicle speed plus this the speed of the wind in the opposite direction squared and we take the wind speed to be zero so then with this we get the drag force to be equal to 670.65 newton meters and a normal force is equal to um mass into 9.81 into sine zero which is zero so total force we get is um 800.9 newton meters so from the total forces we can also go ahead and um, then calculate the more power, motor power which is nothing but the total sport or force into the vehicle speed divided by the efficiency which is 32.1 kilowatt and then torque at maximum speed yeah and then you can also find the torque at maximum speed using these formulas and then the starting torque is equal to max torque which you could max torque at field by gear ratio and then starting torque can also be represented as the acceleration into mass into delta plus the rolling forces into the wheel radius divided by the gear ratio and where delta is given by the formula as shown in the screen which is the rotational mass of the vehicle and then you get the starting torque to be equal to 228.63 these values are important because we provided these values into the motor for example the motor power is 32.1 kilowatts and we'll be using a 35 kilowatt motor Okay, so to begin with, we'll need um, a vehicle's body, and this body can be found on the in the Simulink browser. You can double click on the diagram, and um, you can see that the mass is um, not what the mass was that we calculated. And then um, you'll also have to fill in the drag. Um, be sure to take a look at the units on the right hand side because um, this makes the world of difference. And yeah, coming back, so the drag was around 2.153 um, and then the drag coefficient is 0 0.39 and then the air density is 1.225 kg per um, meter cube. Now, um, we have the pitch and variables, which you're not interested in right now. And um, let's go to the library browser and search for a PS Simulink block because um, we will need to have the record of the vehicle's velocity as well as a feedback loop so yeah we'll need that it, it is essentially um yeah it essentially links two different libraries of simulink and make sure you change the units to kilometers per hour and then you need a constant block to um, say that you have zero wind and you need a simulink to ps block for this one so again this links two different libraries of uh, matlab and once this is done, this gets added to the vehicle block and zero is the input. 
and um, yeah so then we need tires we need four of these tires we take the tire with the magic formula and um, we need to go to the rolling resistance on and then we had a frictional co constant coefficient of 0 0.013 and then um, copy paste this tire four times and then um, once this tire is uh, copy pasted four times connect it such that um, you have two in the back and two in the front so do the same thing for the front tires as well um, paste it and connect it connect the end points and then you can connect the A's together and the H's should go to the hub of the vehicle yeah once this is done as well um, yeah connect all the H's together so this is the tire vehicle configuration that we need and now once this is done we uh, take a differential like we had um, discussed about in the previous video and other videos as well we explain what the role of um, the differential ratio is and then you also need the gear box um, we had a gear ratio of 3 and that is something that we'll have to incorporate as well yeah so you can take a simple gear kind of f to d and um, make it three yeah and click on okay and then go to your library browser and then um, dc motor and you connect your dc motor to the gear box and the other end of the DC motor goes to a mechanical reference. It's called a mechanical rotational reference. And um, you need to change it to by rated load and speed and then change the no load speed and the rated speed. So this is something that you can look up to DC motors that are specific to your design and make sure that um, you specify the rated load and have an eye on the units on the right hand side as well once again this is very important and once this is done then you need a PWM signal for this DC machine DC motor you take a H bridge signal um, connect the positive to the positive um, let me get the screen centered so it's better to see yeah connect the positive to the positive and then the negative can be connected to an electrical reference so like you have a mechanical reference you also have an electrical ground reference just kind of did the ground and then once this is done we also take yeah connect the other points we need to connect the negative reference below and then we also connect the REV input to the negative reference and um, then we need to provide gating pulses to this so for this we use the how um, we can use the controlled um, PWM but there are also other drivers so we can take the control PWM voltage block and um, you can see the library required so then we can drag and drop this block and connect the PWM to the PWM but before we do that we need to change from PWM to average and then input scaling 0 when 0% zero duty cycling 1 when this thing because we only want 1s and 0s and the output voltage is 1 so then we connect this and then we make sure that you come here and the input thresholds Again, make it average, and then for the input thresholds, you uh, make it one zero point zero zero one. So if it goes above zero, it enables, and then you also have PWM signal amp period of one, and then zero point zero zero one again, and then the break-in threshold voltage of zero point zero zero one, and then the bridge parameters. These are the outputs of the H bridge, and you know that you need um, a fifty volt DC output because that's what we specified for our motor as well. So you go to the bridge parameters, type in fifty, and then just leave the rest. Doesn't really matter. And then yeah, now you connect the PWM to the PWM and you connect the reference to the negative part of the electrical circuit. Okay, now we need to connect the references, the positive and the negative reference of the con voltage controller. And um, yeah, so we need two getting pulses. Voltage sources can do that, as in if you give a trigger, it will um, provide... Um, voltage and yeah just make these connections now you need um, a driver 
um, someone who can accelerate your car and also have a look at what the voltage is and um, yeah so now get a longitudinal um, driver and you need a simulink to PS plug again can the connection between two different libraries on MATLAB yeah and then one more yeah well done now that since this is done we um no, no, yeah now it's done now we also have to think about the inputs to the driver so one of them is so imagine yourself to the driver one of them is that you need to know how fast you need to go but then you also need to know how fast you are but for that we just make grade is equal to zero yep and um we also um need to give the input so we also need to give the input to the driver so let's take a scope and view the output of the previous of the vehicle and give that as a reference feedback to the driver yes we make the connections and we make sure must make sure that both of them are in kilometers per hour because that's what we had mentioned initially so kilometers per hour hr and h doesn't really matter Simulink understands it. Now we'll use a Sigma Builder to um, build sim simulation. So this gives us the reference speed that we need to be traveling. So change the time axis to 500 seconds. So we'll simulate the simulation for 500 seconds and drag it out. And you drag the other one out as well. And um, yeah, we can play around with what kind of uh, speed reference you want your um, car to flow or follow and um, yeah you can play it around like this but then make sure that's realistic so it doesn't go from a high speed drastically to a low speed your car may not be able to do it so we make it real, as realistic as possible um, again the input to this is in uh, kilometers per hour so it goes 0 0.35 we multiply it into hundreds so that goes around 35 kilometers per hour from zero and um yeah now you give a grain of 100 give the speed reference as well now you can run the model huh? oh yeah before you run the model we also need a, a solver yeah we also need a solver and change the stop time you run the model and then now you see that um oh it's not it's in the opposite direction so the error here i think is the the gearbox since it's going in the opposite uh, direction so it says it's in the opposite direction to the input shaft I th it should be in the same direction as the input shaft so we change that and um once we see the simulation we can see that our simulation it works just as it's supposed to work We have a maximum speed and um, yeah so this is what we wanted in simulation and this is what we got so if you split it and you can see the reference speed and the actual speed is exactly the same so that's it for this video thank you for watching this video kindly subscribe to our channel and um, comment your doubts in the section below see you soon